it's another delicious day here in the let's make food from food kitchen and it's time to make some cookies for christmas i'm going to make some gingerbread cookies not gingerbread men that's a different process this is just gingerbread cookies but not just gingerbread cookies they're delicious so one of the things about gingerbread cookies is that they are made with molasses and i wanted to talk about molasses and what it is because for the longest time i didn't know what it was molasses is a byproduct of refining sugar so when you refine cane sugar or beet sugar you get molasses as a byproduct then there's different kinds of molasses this is original basic molasses and then this is blackstrap molasses well what's the difference this one is boiled down three different times it's thicker but it's also bitter where this one is not so bitter so this one's not the one we're going to use for today's recipe we're going to use our standard molasses because we don't want it to be bitter however this one is more nutritionally dense because it's been reduced two more times than this one has so it has some benefits it also has um lo both of these have low fat low fiber and low calories I've got two different bowls out here one for dry ingredients and one for my wet ingredients the first thing I want to do is take my one cup of cane sugar and my baking soda cloves ginger cinnamon and salt I'm gonna get those in there and I'm gonna take my whisk and whisk them together. Now you'll notice on the recipe that it calls for a separate serving of sugar. Two to three tablespoons is fine. You're going to roll your cookie balls in them, your dough balls in the sugar. So that's why it's listed as a separate line item. Okay, so you just wanna get this blended together really well. Okay, and then we're just gonna set it aside. So what I wanna do is take my butter and I need one fourth cup of molasses. And this is thick, even though it's not as thick as the black strap's gonna be. Okay. Okay, I have one tablespoon of water and I'm going to crack my one room temperature egg into here. And you can cream your sugar in with this as well. Now I'm gonna start scooping in my flour mixture a little bit at a time as I blend. Now this is a very, very thick, dense dough. So it is soft and kind of supple, so that's what you're looking for. What I'm gonna do now is get rid of the beaters and this extra bowl over here. I'm going to grab a little bit of flour for my hands so that this doesn't stick as much to my hands. So I'm gonna get that and I will be right back. Make sure your oven's on to 350 degrees. Yeah. Hands are clean, I'm ready to go. This is for after we bake. It's a little powdered sugar we can dust on top, and that is optional completely. So now I'm gonna take a little flour and just kind of rub it on my fingers. And then we wanna get some little balls about this size, okay? Does that look good? Maybe an inch-ish. I'm terrible with this. Inch, inch and a half. We're gonna place them. We don't need to grease our baking sheet because of all that butter that's in there so we're gonna try and get them evenly sized and then we're gonna roll them in the sugar and this is cane sugar okay like so and you might need a little bit more depends on how well you roll them in but I'd say three tablespoons is a good starting spot Okay, and you're just gonna repeat this. You should get 20 to 24 cookies, depending on the size of your 
dough balls just make sure that when you're rolling your dough balls try really hard to get them pretty close to the same size otherwise they won't bake evenly and you'll have some that are um, overcooked some that are undercooked right so just try and get those ball sizes about the same okay now I've got one cookie sheet done for me this is of course smaller this is um, because I have my smaller oven here so you can fill up a full size sheet and then you're going to gently press down now you can use a cup for this you can use a fork for this I'm just I've already got my hands in the trenches so why not just press them down with my hands a little bit just do it gently and then you're gonna cook them for eight to ten minutes now you can do two cookie sheets at the same time in your oven I'm not gonna do that with this because that bottom rack is just too close to the burners and then they tend to burn either way if you choose to do two cookie sheets at once halfway through your cooking time you're gonna take them out and swap the rack so with the cookie sheets that's on the bottom you're gonna move it up to the top so I'm gonna go ahead and get these started and then I can prepare my next sheet to go in I'm gonna do single batches so I'm gonna come back when they're done what you want to do is pull them out let them sit for five minutes to cool cookies are in set my timer we're gonna get it going here that's gonna cut count down and I am going to get this next baking sheet prepared with dough balls and I'll see you back when that one is done okay these are almost ready to pull out I don't know why I didn't think of this before if you haven't already done your dough balls in your sugar plop it in there and just swirl it flip it over and swirl it and then it's evenly perfectly coated Duh. okay so I'm gonna grab the cookies Okay, I've got the next one in there. So what I wanna do while these are still hot is dust them lightly. This is a very fine mesh sieve. I'm gonna dust them very lightly with some powdered sugar. And I think it just makes it a little more Christmassy, a little prettier. I don't wanna overdo it, but I definitely want you to know that there's some powdered sugar on there. Okay, so these are gonna cool on this cookie sheet for five minutes because they're gonna be really soft for now. And then we're gonna transfer them to a cooling rack where we're gonna let them cool completely. Cookies are done. I've got three different stages, mostly cooled, cooling, and just out of the oven and dusted. So without any further delay, let's just pop one open. Just, oh, look at that, it's so pretty. Mm. I never get tired of saying it. You might get tired of hearing it, but I never get tired of saying it. Scratch made, always better. Every time. Mm. Soft and delicious. So once these are completely cooled, store them in an airtight container and they will stay soft. If you leave them out, they're gonna get hard and crunchy, but. They will stay soft if you leave them in an airtight container. What's your favorite cookie? Tell me what it is down below and maybe I'll make them here in my kitchen. Thanks for joining me today on another kitchen adventure. From my kitchen to yours, let's make food from food. That's one boy puppy.